Hi folks, my name is Thomas and I'm here with Arun, AI expert from Veritas. And right before Ignite, we are going to talk about data security, AI, and the cloud evolution with Veritas. If you are at Microsoft Ignite, make sure you visit the Veritas booth there. Um, so Varun, without further ado, it's great to have you here. Um, and there is quite some buzz around uh, Veritas enhanced anomaly detection and cybersecurity measurements um, together with AI. Could you dive into this a little bit more and like tell me the exciting things about it? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me here, Thomas. Uh, at Veritas, we're really excited about our recent announcements, in particular, our Veritas Defense 360 architecture, where we really go into the whole concept that cybersecurity is a team sport. You really need a partner ecosystem to be able to put your customers' uh, outcomes first. And uh, very recently, we made some announcements around how we've enhanced our anomaly detection capabilities, our malware scanning, and really enhanced our data security capabilities across the board in partnership with Microsoft and some of our other uh, security ecosystem friends. So uh, really excited about how AI has even enabled a lot of these opportunities, because as uh, you're familiar, AI and cybersecurity almost go hand in hand. And as bad actors start to use AI, it's increasingly important for us in the security ecosystem to start to use AI to be able to put ourselves in a better position. Oh, that sounds really cool. And again, we will talk about a little bit more about the Veritas and Microsoft uh, partnership uh, in just a bit. But let's take a step back and have a look at uh, how the AI underpinnings uh, basically have the, brings up these advancements. Absolutely. So Veritas has uh, three pillars today uh, within our product uh, solution. So we have data protection, compliance and governance, and application availability. And we use AI to varying degrees in each of these products, uh, in many cases in partnership with Microsoft Azure. So I would say that the one that a lot of our customers would already be familiar with are uh, the anomaly detection capabilities. And think of this as having a super vigilant guard dog that is always ready and prepared to be able to alert you the moment there's any anomaly. So whether it's multiple login attempts or anomalous behavior within the files, we uh, are able to provide you real-time alerts so that you're able to respond to those ransomware um, signals and, and be able to uh, recover seamlessly. And in addition to that, we also have our data compliance and governance portfolio where we have been using data classification capabilities that, that are AI powered uh, through Azure AI. Um, and those have really helped us provide really compelling outcomes for our customers and be able to just get full visibility and control on their data. Awesome. So obviously um, integrating with AI uh, comes also with certain uh, challenges and risk. So can you talk a little bit, since you have the experience there, can you talk a little bit about the risk and reward, uh, rewards uh, associated with the AI integration? Absolutely, Thomas. So as with any technology, with great power comes great responsibility, right? So with AI as, as well, if you think about some of the risks, uh, data breaches is one that we hear quite frequently from our, from our customers. Uh, when you think about feeding some of these models, there's concerns around, hey, is my data private? Uh, is it going to be secure? Is it going to um, be exposed to any bad actors? And, and I think the entire security ecosystem is working in tandem to make sure that we are able to provide a lot more transparency around the security behind some of these AI capabilities. And then there's, of course, the ethical dilemma, right? You are ceding control of some of your security to essentially a machine. And so uh, being able to think through how the machine is making decisions and, and how the model actually works is really critical and ethics needs to be at the forefront. So you're gonna start to see a lot more research, a lot more uh, just conversation around the safety uh, tied to AI and the ethics tied to AI. And, and that is leading to uh, some standardization. And I think there's definitely a need and you can start to see some progress around AI regulation. And um, the most recent uh, Biden, uh, administ uh, the Biden administration executive order that came out as well is, is an indication that that regulation is coming. Yeah, so this is, this is definitely interesting. And obviously there are some uh, challenges and questions up there. But on the other side, um, if you are right now an early adopter of AI, 
what are the benefits you get out of uh, for your organization? So one of the things that I like to tell um, customers and, and just anybody I've been having conversations with around this space is AI is not a speculative technology. It is not crypto. Uh, it is something that has been around for decades now. Uh, and most recently, generative AI is what has captured the imaginations of a lot of uh, customers. And the seeds for generative AI were laid way back in 2017 when that Google paper came out uh, on Transformers, attention is all you need. And since then, the series of developments with large language models and GPT coming out has, has enabled almost like the iPhone moment of generative AI, if you will. And so in that process, as you start to think about the opportunities, there's already first movers in this space who are starting to see real revenue and real um, profits from being able to adopt these technologies and by making these accessible for their customers. And um, Microsoft's a great example. I, if you think about Microsoft's co-pilot, um, I, I am clearly seeing a lot of traction around that product. And, and it's almost, to me, um, opening up the frontier for what product experience needs to look like going down the line, where you almost have an AI assistant that can help you and and do tasks with you and really augment your own productivity. And so I think as we start to think about the opportunities for early adopters, starting with cost savings and productivity gains and accelerating just the performance of your business, there's also going to be opportunities for game-changing AI, where you create new products, new solutions, new and enter new markets that, is, that will help you create um, persistent differential returns compared to your competition. Yeah, absolutely. And and I, I agree. I love the exa like the, the example you brought up with like compare it to other technologies out there, like for example, blockchains and things like that. One of the things I think about AI especially is like especially with generative AI, I think we went in a state where everyone can get a benefit out of it, right? There's not a like like even my mom, which is not any computer <laughs> uh, savvy person, she already can use AI and, and, and like co-pilot and things like that uh, to generate things and get answers and, and so on. So that's pretty impressive. Now, talking about organizations, um, what can organizations expect um, from an AI integration? So a very interesting um, fact from a recent Gartner survey was that while 80% of CIOs wanted to adopt AI by 2022, 2023, only a third of CIOs have actually managed to operationalize their efforts. So there's clearly a gap between the desire to implement AI and, and the actual real world adoption of it. And there's a series of hurdles that are, that are essentially, I would say, uh, creating barriers for enterprise rate adoption today and, and not uh, least of which is data privacy, compliance and governance, and security concerns. And as we think about how organizations should navigate this, it is really important to have partners who can help you navigate this, this uh, territory, these uncharted wat uh, waters, who clearly understand the space. So I think Veritas and Microsoft are, are perfect examples because we're pioneering what, what this technology can look like. And also um, in the case of Veritas, we're adopting this technology internally. So we, we we call it eating our own dog food. So we're playing around with this technology. We're using it today to um, speed up requests for information, provide an enriched knowledge base for our field sales reps, and uh, just be able to make our teams more productive internally. And in the process of doing so, we're really understanding what are some of the challenges in implementing this in, in an enterprise-grade setting. And then as you think about enabling our customers, it is really important for them to not just think about the shiny object that are these, these large language models, but also your data needs to be AI ready. So there's the pre-processing, there's the protection that goes into it, making sure that there's no uh, personally identifiable information in there or PII, and you're essentially future-proofing yourself when you're creating some of these models or fine-tuning some of these models. And so uh, some advice that I would have for organizations is before you even go down this path, articulate an AI vision, then an AI strategy, and then make sure that your data analytics pipeline and your data itself is AI ready. And then you are, you are truly 
in a position to be able to start having these conversations. Awesome. So this is, there's definitely a lot of uh, power uh, in the AI space. And there is also obviously, as you just described, there's a lot of like learnings. Um, and I know that Veritas can, can help with that. Um, so how does Veritas uh, is addressing, how is Veritas addressing these challenges uh, to unlock the AI's full potential? Absolutely. So today we do already have a series of AI capabilities integrated into our products, whether it is the anomaly detection and manware scanning or the data classification within our compliance and governance product. Um, as we look ahead into what Veritas can enable in partnership with Microsoft, Think of it as a much more intelligent way of doing data management. So if you had a co-pilot next to you who could essentially help you make more sense of all of your backups, uh, could help you make a lot more sense of where your data is and help you make uh, intelligent decisions around where your data should live even before an attack so that you are... Um, secure and and your sensitive data is protected, that is really powerful to organizations. So before an attack even happens, we can help our customers make intelligent decisions around where their data lives and help them have complete control and visibility over that data. Then as we go into how can Veritas uh, help customers during an attack, the real-time anomaly detection comes in, right? Being able to respond as a ransomware attack is happening and, and uh, through our malware scanning and, and um, anomaly detection capabilities. And then after the attack, being able to enable our customers to have secure recovery in the way that helps them minimize downtime and helps them get up and running really quickly and be able to prioritize within um, those jobs, like what is the most sensitive data, or what is the most critical data that they need for being able to get up and running. All of those things can be enabled uh, in combination with, with, with Veritas and Microsoft. And uh, today we're, we're actively working towards enabling these outcomes for our customers. And we're definitely open to having more conversations around how we can help our customers take advantage of these generative AI technologies through um, examples such as the data classification that I mentioned, where you take into account the personally identifiable information that lives uh, in these data sets and scrub those for our customers. So we're, we're definitely looking into a number of different areas where we can enable business outcomes for our customers that would help them uh, not only take advantage of our solutions in a far more seamless uh, and user-friendly experience, but also dip their toe into into this new technology in a secure and compliant way. Great, great. So you mentioned the Veritas and Microsoft partnership a couple of times, and I know we do a lot in this space uh, together, especially. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the Veritas-Microsoft partnership when it comes to the AI domain? Absolutely. So the Veritas-Microsoft partnership is something that has been going on for several years where Within the cloud, we enable just unparalleled cyber resilience and unified data governance and compliance. And so we're extending that even further by partnering really closely with Microsoft and in, in integrating some of these AI capabilities that Microsoft is pioneering into our solutions to just enable our customers to have that much more of an enriched experience and be able to take advantage of not just the AI-powered security features, but also just the overall user experience enhancement through the likes of Copilot and such. So we're, we're definitely exploring a number of different opportunities with Microsoft on integrating some of these AI capabilities, but you will start to see a lot of the capabilities that already exist today get even further enhanced and enable almost an autonomous data management vision in the future uh, for, for our solutions where everything around data management from Veritas just works seamlessly and you, there's a lot of automation intelligence just built in. Fantastic. And again, we are luckily right now, it mean, depends on when you're watching this video, but we're luckily right now, uh, right before Microsoft Ignite. Um, so if you are going to Microsoft Ignite, um, then please visit the Veritas booth to actually learn more about all of the partnership together and all about the capabilities uh, Veritas can offer there. Um, speaking more about uh, the terms of what Veritas and Microsoft can actually offer, 
Um, can you talk a little bit about the strategies uh, that are in place for cyber resiliency? Because I know you're also an expert in terms of resiliency as well. So uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Yeah. So when we think about cyber resiliency, we, we'd like to think about the holistic journey of uh, an entire ransomware attack and recovering from that. So like I said at, at the beginning of our conversation, cybersecurity and cyber resiliency is a team sport. So we really prioritize our security ecosystem and integrations that enable us to just provide a much more seamless experience for our customers before, during, and after um, a, a ransomware attack. And essentially, if you think about ransomware today, our, our customers can take upwards of 200 days or any any um, organization can take upwards of 200 days if they're not using a cyber resiliency solution or, or if they're not using Veritas to recover. And we can condense that time frame to days and weeks. Uh, and, and essentially, our goal is to enable the best cyber resiliency outcomes for our customers and that they're able to get their businesses up and running. And more importantly, they're able to respond in real time with the help of our anomaly detection capabilities, our immutable storage, and then also just uh, the, the real time anomaly detection, as I mentioned, and the security integrations that we have. So um, AI is only going to enable us to, to be able to provide that experience, that, that additional boost, and be able to uh, help our customers make intelligent decisions in real time when they're dealing with, with the likes of a ransomware attack. Awesome. This really brings it to a whole other uh, level. Um, so obviously, I'm super interested in this. Uh, where do I go if I want to learn more? Join us at Ignite. Uh, definitely visit the Veritas booth there. And uh, we recently launched our Vox community on AI. Please join the conversation there and, and help shape the future of AI and data security with us. Awesome. So thank you, Varun. Uh, we will definitely put all the links into the description below this video. And thank you very much for joining me today. This was super interesting. And also, thank you to everyone watching. See you in the next one. Thank you, Thomas.